Good morning, everyone. Lee Chekstad here from Century 21 Canada. Thank you for joining us for day two of our Be Relentless webinar series, a place, a community for you to come each weekday at this time. We've got a series of interesting speakers lined up dealing with topics that you're probably thinking about in your real estate business right now. Yesterday, we kicked things off with Richard Robbins, who gave some really great advice on what you can be doing and really how to get into the mindset of what you'll be doing for the next couple of weeks or months. Today, we wanted to take on a different and very specific topic because I know that open houses are something that a lot of you have questions around. You're trying to figure out some workarounds and many of you aren't even allowed to have them in your community. So listen to the public health officer is our first piece of advice. Um, but there are some ways you can continue to show properties. And our Tracy Anderson is here with us today with open house alternatives and recommendations. We also have Carly Fulton with us. They've been experimenting with some different social media options and communication options. So she's here to tell us a little bit about those. So Tracy, I'll hand it over to you this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Lee. And, woo, thank you very much. I'm getting some feedback here, so that's kind of interesting. Um, as Lee has said, this is a very interesting time, and we thought it would be absolutely appropriate to give you some practical how-tos going forward around the topic of open houses. So uh, welcome to your new normal, folks. This is what it's going to be like for the next, as Lee says, in weeks and months. You are watching a paradigm shift in our industry in motion. These new skills that you're going to be learning over the next days and weeks as we go forward during this, this time um, is going to create new efficiencies for you as well. You may have to do less physical showings, but that'll mean more time to serve your consumers as well because we have been so focused on good quality uh, customer service in the past, it's only going, these new skills are only going to prove that uh, we can do more, we can respond to the environment as we go forward, and that equals happy consumers. So let's talk about the burning topic, open houses, public and agent open houses, for the most part across the country have been um, suggested against, outright banned, it depends on which board you belong to, what the rules are for that, but that's okay because we have some practical how-tos going forward. How about home showing protocols? You know, we need to be flexible around that too. What is your board said? What is What are the health professionals in your community say you need to heed that advice. If you are continuing to show for the safety of yourself as well as for uh, for your clients, your buyers, and your sellers, why don't you prepare a COVID kit with a few of these items in there to make sure that you have everything you need should you need to get out and do uh, actual physical showing. The wonderful folks in marketing um, and the rest of the head office team have put our heads together in order to create a virtual open house kit. It's in the resource center. You have everything you possibly could need. And a lot of the topics that we're going to touch on today are um, offered in the Google documents in the open house kit so that you if you don't get it uh, first go around today with me no worries you're going to have a step-by-step -step instruction in the resource center as you go forward so here we go let's dive right in so one way not the only way but one way you can um, offer a virtual open house is through Facebook live so let's walk through some of the steps that you're going to need to take in order to do a really great virtual open house on Facebook. You're going to need to open your Facebook app. You can either put it on your newsfeed or in your uh, profile page. Either way, you just need to hit that live button. And you can see here, um, Jocelyn has made some wonderful diagrams going forward for that. Next, uh, Facebook is going to prompt you to ask you for permission to use your camera and your microphone. You likely are only going to have to do this one time, but don't be surprised if you see this the first time it pops up and never again after that. 
Then super easy. The next steps are you choose who you can view or who can view you. <laughs> You're going to choose. Um, this is your privacy options here. So um, this one is selected only me, but you could choose a group. You could choose um, to put it on your profile. You have lots of opportunities there for choices. Write a compelling description. Sell the sizzle. Get those people to uh, watch your video. Um, it's like getting more boots in the door, get more eyes on the screen uh, in this case. Then make sure you tag your friends and the location of the open house because that is going to allow for further dissemination of this um, lovely marketing opportunity. Next, you're going to have to set your camera orientation. You then start your broadcast. Don't be nervous. And it's then time to interact with your viewers. Now, Richard Robbins yesterday gave a great idea, and I would absolutely suggest that you do this as well. View the house as if you're working with a buyer. Just do a little tour of the house for 10 minutes. Then respond to your viewers for five minutes. Answer those questions live. Go through it again, 10 more minutes, then rinse and repeat on the questions, and you've got yourself a great virtual open house. Then you need to finish your broadcast by clicking finish to, and confirm your privacy options. Then I would really highly recommend that you save your video to your camera roll. Once you've finalized your settings, you can click on the blue share button and that's it. Now, there's a reason why I wanted you to use the, uh, so save the video to your camera roll because I want you to use it in other places as well. This is an excellent opportunity for you to share this video with your sellers so that they can then share it on their Facebook pages. Upload it to your website or any other websites that you have the opportunity to upload a virtual tour to. I know that in our MLS here in Manitoba, we are able to um, add a virtual tour to our MLS board listings. Check it out, see if you can do that as well. Also highlight it on your other social media channels. This is a great way to disseminate this wonderful marketing piece. Send it to all your interested buyers and why not share it in your company uh, Facebook page if that's allowed by the rules of the administrator. Be creative, you can use a lot, or you can use this tool in a lot of different places. Last but not least, let's cover a couple of quick tips. Um, practice on your own until you feel comfortable with it. The delete button is your friend. <laughs> um, don't be shy. If you are shy about being on camera, not to worry. This is about showing the house to the consumer, not necessarily about having you be front and center. So take your place behind the camera and show the house um, to its fullest. Tour the house as if you're working with a client. Imagine you're having these conversations. What would your clients who are interested in this home feel are the most important features? Point those out. And don't forget to pan the camera around the room looking up and down. Do it slowly and smoothly so then um, everyone has an opportunity to see um, every square inch of that house. Make sure again that you're moving slowly and steadily and really have fun. This is a new technology for a ton of people out there. So the consumer is going to be very forgiving. They want to be able to see these houses. They're interested. They've proven it over and over again. So you are providing a great service for them. And now let's move on to our wonderful Miss Carly Fulton. She has had some great success with virtual showings. Um, Carly, take it away. Good. Yep. So I'm speaking um, also on behalf of the Fulton sisters, so not just myself. So all three of us are participating in virtual showings and virtual tours. We haven't dabbled in necessarily a virtual open house, um, but we've been doing virtual tours. So we had a recent listing um, last week in Toronto as a one bedroom condo. Um, it was scheduled to be listed on a Tuesday, which happened to be the uh, following day of our first announcement. So that was really exciting to get a listing up that day. Um, it went listed as scheduled on the Tuesday. I had one showing, which is very rare for a condo listed at 499 in Toronto. That one showing had a dog and literally couldn't even entertain the building. So I was a little bit worried. Um, we had posted a picture of the condo on our Instagram and Caitlin and Paige had done some video content on Facebook as well. And we ended up being approached by a, another Century 21 member um, that we had been in touch with, one of our referral partners from another province. 
um, he was looking for a condo for his daughter. So already um, it's a little bit unique in that way. Um, that daughter could not come to see the house in person. So I offered to do a virtual showing. Um, I went to the condo, we did it on WhatsApp video and I literally um, opened drawers and cabinets and got really close to windows and caulking and fixtures. So all the things that you would wanna see when you were live at a house, um, we tried to do via video. Um, so she was quite satisfied. I was personally still a little bit worried that she couldn't come and physically see. She wanted to put in an offer, I wasn't satisfied yet. Um, we ended up calling her parents as well. So we ended up video calling her parents. I did the exact same thing, walked all around it, showed them the, the hallways, like everything, the view. Um, and she was excited enough to actually put in an offer. So she ended up putting in an offer. It was a bully offer on my own condo. So that's an interesting um, thing in Toronto. So I still had to follow my same rules. And it was conditional on her viewing the property um, two days after that offer. Um, so we did get through the offer, but she did view it two days later. So even though she did make an offer conditional in seeing the virtual solution, you still have to go see the property. Um, some things that were unique though, it was a one bedroom condo. So that is a little bit easier to show for, for you know, with a virtual tour as opposed to a two story house. Um, it was my own condo that I had lived in. So I knew a lot about it. Um, and in the end, there was a lot of trust with me and the referral partner as well. And um, so on that point, I think virtual tours of technology is really important, but I also think relationships are really important because we had a lot of trust. It was a referral partner within Century 21. Um, so there's just a lot of trust there. So it's really important to keep your relationship as well as keeping um, up to date with the technology. Um, for other ideas on our Instagram account, life of a realtor underscore GTA, um, Caitlin just did another virtual tour today for a new listing that she's out. Um, we are following all of the COVID rules and regulations and our own sort of personal policies as well. But for other inspiration, you could check out our Instagram because we're doing a combination of just videos and they're really simple on our phone. They're not fancy, it's literally just on our cell phones. Um, so a combination of sort of that on our social media as well as doing live virtual um, showings on our phone on behalf of our clients. That's fantastic. I, I think that you found a way to to work within the environment that we have right now and, and quite clearly, you know, building the trust with your clients and with your referral partners has been paramount to you uh, going through this whole process. So well done you. Yeah, great. Thanks so much. Lee, are there any questions? We do have some questions. And so I'll pitch them to both of you and maybe whoever feels most comfortable can answer them. A lot of them are technical questions. First one, should you be doing a portrait or landscape when you are shooting a video or an open house? Uh, so I'll, I can answer it. So we'll, okay. I'll do um, horizontal. If it's a video that I'm pre-recording and sending to somebody afterwards so that they can look at it on their phone. If it's sort of a live thing or it's on Instagram, then we're doing vertical. And if Katie's in the chat, she can kind of um, clarify because she's more technical than I am, but we're using both depending on what we want to use it for. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. Absolutely. Um, landscape is, is suitable for, for most applications, but then you have to have the vertical occasionally um, for the live. It actually works better that way. Mm -hmm. Next question is similar to this um, in the sense, which camera do you use? Do you use the one facing you? Do you switch the camera to be external? Can, Carly, maybe you can give some advice on best practices for that. So I started off um, just with me and my face. I introduced myself because I had never met her before. So I talked a little about, about me and um, you know a little bit about the condo and then I reversed it. So I just held it, reversed the camera and walked around like this. Um, and then in the end I reversed it back to me, had another conversation to close it. So sort of back and forth a little bit, but I didn't turn my phone. I used the reverse camera on it. Great advice. iPhone versus iPad, does it matter? I think whatever you're most comfortable using, um, I, I don't think it makes a difference to the quality of the video. I'm not as technical as that, but I don't think it makes a difference to the quality of the video. It just depends on how new your phone and iPad are, whether the camera, et cetera, are, 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 are better quality. So yeah. whatever you're comfortable with. Great point. I think those are all of our questions for today. So thank you both for joining us. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, just to let everyone who's watching know, I know there are a number of watch parties out there. I've seen people from Ontario, lots from BC. We've got people across Canada, but I've also seen someone from Bolivia, someone from Cyprus. So thank you as well for joining us. We're happy to have you on this online channel this morning. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about video in general. 
three things that you need to be doing with video in your business. I know a number of people have been reluctant to do video, but as you've been seeing everywhere and what all of our experts are saying, there's never been a better time to connect with people through video, through FaceTime, through BombBomb. Bomb. So we've got some tips around video coming tomorrow. And then Friday, we will be talking about nurturing leads in this time. Lots of good content ahead. So thank you all for joining us. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.